really smart move by Waymo for a variety of reasons. One, it keeps the consistency of the product. They know that there's not enough vehicles. We, we've seen those photos coming out of Phoenix. They know that there's not enough vehicles to really truly scale the service. Opening it to residents, really good way to build trust. I'd like it, which raises the question, why the heck did they not do this in Austin? Because there is no multi-threads, 100 plus comments on Reddit complaining about the user experience, saying, oh, this is great, this is great. There's not the blowback they're getting in Austin. Why not do the same thing for Austin? I mean, Austin, they had the Uber relationship as a result. It's about the amount of cars, which... I don't know. What do you think the number of cars is in Austin these days? We've heard it's substantially less than 100, but we do not have an exact figure, but we don't have those yet. But we know substantially less than 100, substantially less cut it in half, 50. I'm going to go out on a limb. No data to back this up. This is an assumption. I'll say around 40 vehicles, maybe 30. To me, the bigger question is not why they didn't restrict it to residents in Austin. They meaning Waymo or even Uber. But the bigger question for Waymo is... Are there implementation issues in terms of, and I brought this up on the last couple of podcasts, all of those Jaguars that are sitting there waiting to get electronics put on them, like you still only have whatever, let's call it 800, maybe it's up to a thousand now cars in, in California. I don't know what they may need. Clearly, if they're limiting it to residents, maybe it's another hundred cars to, to deal with the Valley, 200 cars to deal with what they're doing in the Valley. What's going on? Who, who is in charge at Waymo with the process to get more cars outfitted and get these cars on the road? Why can't they get more cars on the road? 